This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks and welcome to what has become my Friday thing. A rambling of such proportions that so many people just can't help themselves but watch it. <laughs> well, okay, the last part maybe wasn't quite true, but the first part was it does seem to become my Friday thing. And I do enjoy spending the whole week deciding what it is that I'm going to talk about. Now this week... I want to talk about a number of things that I've kind of thrown into other vlogs as sort of half conversations. And it all kind of stems around the same thing. So this vlog, if will pro well, if this this vlog will technically be about why Sony aren't worried about the Scorpio when it comes out next year. And also what the lifespan of these consoles are going to be now. And how things have changed in that regard, uh, you know, the, the, how things have changed since the 360s and the PS3s and even the PS2s and PS1s and, and all that came before. And the massive amount of times we, we kind of waited for these things. So I'm going to cover that and really the reasons that people pick consoles. So if we start... At the beginning, people, which is exactly where you should start. Because <laughs> if you start in the middle, you'll end up nowhere. So we're going to start at the beginning, which is why I believe that Sony aren't even remotely fussed about the Xbox Scorpio coming out next year. And the fact that it's so-called four times as powerful as the, the Xbox One current, or slim, and which makes it around two more times more powerful than the Pro, the, the PlayStation 4 Pro, which has just been announced and comes out in November. So there's several reasons. Well, there's two main ones. The first reason is that if you look at the life cycle of things now, if you look at what they're doing, we've had two years of the PS4 and two years of the Xbox One, pretty much. And PlayStation have obviously planned for having a mid-cycle console, which is what we've just got in the PlayStation 4 Pro. All right, so that's two years and we've got a PlayStation 4 Pro, which is twice as powerful as the current one and does 4K and HDR. So, and we'll throw in the teraflop, shall we? With four teraflops instead of whatever the hell we've got now, which is probably two teraflops or something. I have no idea, but I think it's around that. So they've gone with that as their mid-life cycle version rather than just doing the slim which they've also done so they're running side by side so their plan in my mind is quite clearly to have a ps5 or something of the ilk depending on how they do these iterations now the ps5 let's call it that in another two years time because they said right at the very beginning there was several very high up people in both of these companies that said we cannot afford to be waiting seven to ten years for the new version of consoles and they know that and this is why they're doing what they're doing with these iterations they also know that they can't keep going on with this it doesn't play the games you had before it doesn't use the kit you had before so both of them seem intent on building hardware that will be forward compatible and backward compatible at the same time so certainly Microsoft, Microsoft is saying whatever you buy now for the Xbox One will work on any iteration they bring out later. So, and I'm pretty sure that's what Sony said as well. But it was really the time factor that they both agreed on. They both said that there's no way that we can be waiting seven to ten years. So that says to me that Sony's vision for releasing consoles is now two, first console comes out, two years, mid-life version after two years, another two years, you then get the full whack new one, which would be the PS5, right? So the reason that they're not concerned about the Xbox Scorpio, one, one of the reasons, is that when the Scorpio, right, they're le releasing their version in November, November 10th, you pick up the Pro, you probably, we don't know for a fact, but if I'm pretty, in my mind, I see Microsoft releasing their Scorpio this time next year around the November mark so that they pick up on the holiday season for next year. That means that the Pro's had a whole year. The Scorpio's just getting going, which means that that PlayStation 4 Pro has only got another year and then the, the PlayStation 5 is going to be out. 
So that's exactly why they're not worried because they're not going to lose PlayStation players just because Microsoft have released the most powerful console in the universe. <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> so I don't see it being a big issue for them. And on top of that, You've got to look at the lineup that's coming out for PS4. And I'm sorry, and I'm not I'm not a fanboy by any regard, right? But I've made no I haven't held back at all in saying that PlayStation is my console of choice and that's where I play my games. But I was a massive player of the 360. I was a 360 player long before I was a PS3 player. So I have a lot of respect for Microsoft, I have a lot of respect for the games they've done, I have a lot of love for them. But at the moment, PlayStation is the place I want to be. And the reason that's the place I want to be is because they make the games I want to play. And th the second reason for all of this is really down to the games that are coming. And I'm sorry, but in my eyes, I can't see anything coming for Microsoft that is better than what's coming for Sony in the PlayStation front. If you look at Days Gone, if you look at God of War, if you look at... Um, Spider-Man, PlayStation 4. There's there's so many, like... And that's just off the top of my head. There's there's more than that. And they're big, big titles, and they're only coming to PlayStation. I mean, they're not anywhere near ready yet, but, I mean, they're... Well, as far as we know, there's not even dates for them. But there's 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 just so much coming, and, and they're such good games. And those sort of titles aren't being matched, in my opinion, on Xbox. So if you release the most powerful console in the universe... <laughs> I'll do that every time I say it, will I? And not bang the microphone in my head. Then why are people going to move just because it's powerful? And the answer to that question is, it's the people that aren't bothered about exclusives, that are bothered about the community they want to sit in, they're bothered about their profiles and game points, they're bothered about, you know, all of these things that make Microsoft a nice place to be. Because it certainly isn't for original content that is of that calibre of interest. Because I'm not seeing it. All I've seen really on big big titles and, and excuse me if i've missed anything obvious here but is halo and gears are the two massive ones so gears 4 is coming and i'm sure it's going to be great and fun and i'll get it and i'll play it and you know it'll be great but it's not anything i haven't seen before it's just a, a really good looking version of what we've seen already so and, and Halo, by all accounts, the campaign was a bit of a disappointment. My, my friends are massive Halo fans. I haven't played it, so I'm judging. I'm not judging it. I'm saying what they said. Uh, they they said that it was a massive letdown, the campaign and the way it played, and, and they just didn't get it. They didn't understand why it had gone so off course. So that kind of didn't hit the kind of peaks that they wanted it to. Obviously, Bungie aren't doing it anymore, so it was a new in-house company studio that did it. Three, uh, something, three, six, no, I can't remember now. 385, Studio 385, something like that. So, you know, but they've got, again, the Gears of, this is the first Gears of War that isn't being made by the people that made it before either. So, you know, the Coalition are making it. That's what they're called now. And it does look fantastic, though. It looks great. And I'm sure it will be a massive hit with the Xbox players. But I don't see it taking PlayStation players over to the Xbox side. So as I've said previously, I think the only people that are going to buy the Xbox Scorpio are current Xbox players who want a more powerful experience. And the really keen players like myself who want to have both best versions of both consoles. And, and I will get one. Uh, without any doubt and it may tempt me to buy titles for that instead of for the playstation 4 pro if they make use of the extra power if they don't then there's no point obviously i'll keep my library on one console but i'm more than happy to buy a cross-gen uh, cro cross-gen cross-platform game on the xbox instead if it's going to take you take use of that extra power so those are the, the reasons, really. I mean, this this brings us to the topic of what what makes a console your console of choice. And for me, it's the games. For other people, it's the community and the games that are playable on either. And it, it could be the exclusives. For me, it's for me it's the exclusives. If I can't 
if I can't play some of the stuff that's coming out, like Uncharted or Spider Man or Days Gone is a massive one. The Last of Us, all of these sorts of things. I, I mean, I couldn't live without this game. The Last of Us is my favorite game probably of all time. I love that game. And there's no doubt going to be a second one of them. So it's all about what floats your boat, I suppose. But I just, uh, this is exactly why my, why Sony are not worried about the, the Xbox Scorpio. Because there is nothing about that machine that will pull people away from PlayStation, games-wise. Nothing. So if, if you've got all of that power and nothing that people are going to be excited about playing on it, then what's the point? Other than the cross-platform. So it's going to be really interesting to see just how well that sells. I'm not convinced that it's going to do quite as well as they think it is, simply because a year later we're probably going to see a PS5. And it also means if that's their time frame of doing things, they're not going to release an Xbox 2 or whatever they call it the year after, which means if Sony do that, they're always going to be a year ahead of, of Microsoft. So they, how are they going to run with that timetable? I don't, I don't understand that. You can't be a year behind your competitor every time something comes out. It doesn't make any sense. So I think Sony have been particularly clever, and I think they ran with this timetable because they knew what Microsoft were up to, and they knew after E3 last year, they knew for sure that the Scorpio was going to come out next year. So they've, they've fronted their timetable. They've either shifted it, or this was always their plan. But they know exactly what they're doing. There's no doubt in my mind at all about that. So that, that's why they're not worried about it. And I've heard so many people on, on podcasts and and things, especially IGN going, oh, there's no point in buying one of these because the Xbox Scorpio is going to be out next year and it's more powerful than that. And it's like, well, it's not as simple as that though, is it? <laughs> it's all very well that there's a more powerful one coming out next year, but the year after you're going to be thinking about buying the more powerful one from Sony. So it's it makes no sense what you're doing. Like, make use of the twice as powerful PS4 and have the library that you, you really like, you know? But what do I know, eh? So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, it was kind of the reason I've kind of raised this subject again is because I saw so many people saying there's no point to the PlayStation 4 Pro because the Scorpio is going to be more powerful. But that that argument makes no sense. It makes no sense because what are you going to do? You're going to have a more powerful one for a year and then want to get the PlayStation 5. It makes no sense. And then you've got the library, the, the games. What's the reason to move? There isn't one for the sake of a year. So... Yeah, I mean, it all boils down to what community you want to be part of, which oil boil, that, that all oil, oil boil, oil boil downs to, <laughs> or something like that. The fact that you've already made your choice, you've already picked your team. So unless you're a mega player who wants both, like me, then you're not going to move, you're not going to change just because Microsoft have brought out a, a really powerful console. So yeah, I, I'm not convinced it's going to be the massive seller that microsoft think it is and it's certainly not going to pull people into the microsoft world that aren't already there can't see it happening shrug shoulders hashtag shrug shoulders <laughs> i mean i don't know i mean maybe there's more in the game library that for for xbox that i don't know about but i haven't seen anywhere near the lineup on xbox that i'm seeing on playstation Certainly not that takes my fancy anyway. And everything that seems to come out for PlayStation, uh, for Xbox, seems to be kind of, I don't know, almost not full on. I mean, like, Recore's getting really mixed reviews. Like, some of them are great and some of them are, like, really bad. So it's kind of bouncing between two. And PlayStation had the same thing with uh, The Order, where people either loved it or got annoyed with it. So, but but... The Order looked like a AAA title, whereas Recall, I don't know, it doesn't have that, I mean, it doesn't quite have that AAA sort of vibe. I mean, they're even selling it for like £30, you know, online. I mean, you never see prices like that on AAA titles online. They're always like 50 quid or something. So I don't I don't really know where Microsoft are heading. I don't know what their, their big library going forward is. They've obviously Tomb Raider, I can't see the next Tomb Raider being only for Xbox. The Tomb Raider game is now about to come out for the PlayStation 4, so that exclusive's gone, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's just about to launch with all the DLC as well. So yeah, I I don't see I don't see how Microsoft are gonna be stealing people from PlayStation. They they really need to rethink their scheduling. 
because they, as I say, they can't afford to be a year behind Sony at every turn. It, it won't work for them. In every case, like the, they'll always be behind in sales. But again, I, I mean that is only part of the problem because if you can't if you can't match the lineup of games either, you're still going to be struggling. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. I mean, they shut down Lionhead Studios, which, I mean, Fable was a, uh, for me, Fable was a massive pull for RPG players. I don't know why that's gone. I mean, it, I I had I did a whole vlog on it at one point. But Fable, I know it didn't sell the gazillions that they wanted it to, but it most certainly sold millions. And I don't understand why they, they didn't keep it going. I know a lot of people didn't like I didn't. I, I have this conversation again. My preference to them was three, two, one, which is the opposite to just about everybody else. <laughs> but so, I don't quite. I don't understand at all why they shut that down. I, I, and the amount of sales they would have got from that company on a proper Fable Four would have been amazing. But they but they made their decision based on this this MMO that they'd created, which nobody asked for and nobody wanted, and shut the studio down on it. But as far as I know, they still own the rights to it. So, you know, maybe those sorts of things will come back to the library. Maybe they'll build another studio that can use the rights to Fable and run with another studio building it like they have with Halo and Gears. But I don't know if by losing those people that brought that feel that you're losing a feel and a, something in the game. I mean, we'll find out with Gears 4 when it comes. But Halo most definitely lost something. because, And I haven't played it, so again, I'm going by my friends and they're massive Halo fans, that's definitely lost something campaign-wise because they just didn't get it at all. And I, I hear the multiplayer's all right. I hear the multiplayer's pretty good. So if you're into the multiplayer Halo, I suppose you've probably had a lot of fun on it. But I've got a feeling that Gears 4 will be a big hit. But again, it, as I say, it's not going to be something that pulls PlayStation players into buying an Xbox Scorpio. No chance. So there you are. So I, I wanted to do like a little vlog on this just... Because I'd kind of spat these, that's a horrible word, isn't it? <laughs> Placed these conversations into other vlogs, sort of as little bit parts. And I thought I'd bring it all together into one as to just how long consoles will last, why PlayStation weren't worried and so on. But for my for my liking, I think we're going to be looking at five-year turnarounds on full new-gen versions of consoles. If they said right at the beginning it's not going to be seven years or ten years, then it has to be five or six. And I can't be it six is too long as well. And looking at PlayStation's life cycle span, if they're releasing a, a double the power after two years, then they've got to be looking at a PlayStation 5 in another two. At which point they'll probably do something that's slightly more powerful than the Scorpio. And in two years after that, a one that's twice as powerful as that. So I think that looks to be the way we're doing it. So there you are. There are my feelings on the matter, or matters. <laughs> I hope that's been of some kind of use to you. Or maybe my dulcet tones have sent you to sleep. I'd have no idea. <laughs> but it felt like fun, and it's been nice talking to you all again. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you all again. Go and have one of these, and I shall see you all next week. Take it easy, folks. Bye.